Hi, welcome to J Sweat Plastic Surgery. I'm Dr. Jeffrey Sweat. You're being asked to watch this video today as a general introduction to the practice. It is our goal here that you are taken care of in a state-of-the-art facility, but also that we make sure that you're comfortable and that all of your questions are answered. This is definitely a team approach. As an individual surgeon who operates anywhere from three to four days a week, I rely on my team around me to help with your care throughout the entire process. I've also surrounded myself by people who are highly educated about what we do, so oftentimes they will answer your questions. If you have any questions that they can't answer, obviously they'll talk to me and we'll make sure that we have all of your questions answered. But it is important to understand that it is a team approach, and oftentimes throughout the surgical process you will interface with me from time to time, but you will often interface with my staff more frequently than you do with me. And this is so that we make ourselves available to you at all times and any time that you have problems. Obviously, we will provide you with an emergency number that you can call after hours, but when our office is open, it is always best to call the office to get the fastest response. If you have any questions or concerns about the process and how we are taking care of you as a patient here at J Sweat Plastic Surgery, please don't hesitate to ask. Thank you and welcome to the practice. The purpose of this video today is to discuss liposuction. Liposuction occasionally is done in combination with fat transfer or by itself in order to obtain a better contour to the body. It is important to understand that liposuction is not a weight loss tool and cannot be used for weight loss. However, it works very well for targeted areas in which stubborn fat refuses to go away through diet and exercise. Most commonly, if there's an area on your body where you can physically put the fatty tissue into the palm of your hand, that's gonna respond very well to liposuction surgery. What we're doing with liposuction is taking a metal rod about the size of a pin and passing it through small incisions underneath the skin to try and as evenly as possible remove the fatty tissue. If too much fatty tissue is removed in one spot and not enough in the surrounding areas, it can cause a dent or a divot or contour irregularities. It's also important to understand that liposuction does not tighten the skin. Thus, if there's some laxity of the skin, you can have wrinkling of the skin afterwards or increased laxity. I oftentimes liken it to letting the air out of a tire. When you let the excess air out of the tire, you're left with excess rubber behind. Obviously, if we've recommended liposuction for you, we feel that you're a good candidate, but no guarantees can be made about how your skin is going to react to the liposuction after surgery. If your skin appears to be excessively loose, oftentimes we will encourage you not to undergo liposuction, but rather have a body contouring surgery instead. Liposuction is most commonly done as an outpatient surgery, which means you're gonna come in the morning of surgery and go home that same day. There is a limit to how much liposuction can be done in one sitting, and by California law, we are restricted to removing five liters or less of fat and the fluid that is associated with the liposuction in one sitting as an outpatient surgery. That means that once we meet the target of five liters, the surgery itself has to be stopped, even if we haven't fully treated all of the areas that we feel like we would want to contour preoperatively. The surgery itself, again, is done as an outpatient surgery, which means you're gonna come in the morning of surgery and go home that same day. Depending on how much liposuction we're doing, it's done either under IV sedation or conscious sedation, where we start an IV in the back of your hand and make you sleepy, and then inject numbing medication into all the areas where we're going to work, or if it's a particularly large uh, amount of liposuction in one procedure, or if it's associated with a fat transfer, oftentimes we will suggest that you have a general anesthesia for your comfort as well as to increase the amount of tissue that I can remove so that you're not uncomfortable during the surgery and I can be more aggressive with the liposuction. Occasionally, we'll take the fatty tissue that's removed and we will process it and then inject it back into a person's body. That's known as fat transfer. Most commonly, we transfer the fatty tissue into the buttocks, also known as a Brazilian butt lift. This procedure has gained a lot of controversy over the last few years in terms of its safety. It is super important that the fatty tissue be placed into the subcutaneous space but not into the muscle itself because if the fat is placed into the muscle, it can get into the bloodstream, travel to the heart and lungs, and be fatal. Um, this is called a fat embolism. Oftentimes people have heard about blood clots that can form in your legs that can travel to your heart and lungs, um, and that also can be fatal, and that is a blood clot type of embolism, also known as a pulmonary embolism. Basically, the concept is the same, whether it's blood or fat, the outflow of blood from the heart to the lungs is stopped, and that's why the event can be fatal. And that's why we have to be super careful when we're transferring fat back into the body. 
Other areas where we do fat transfer are the breasts, although I'm not a big fan of that as it tends to not take very well with time. And it also is very limited in terms of how much volume increase we can get, even if we do it in several sittings. With the fatty tissue injected into the buttocks, it tends to work fairly well. But again, if we transfer too much tissue and the fat doesn't get an adequate blood supply, it can turn into a hard lump and occasionally we'll have to remove that hard lump, which is also known as fat necrosis. Because of the way the fat is processed, we only expect that about 50% of the fat is going to survive long term. So we always over inject what we want um, and overfill the area so that when the swelling resolves and when the fluid is reabsorbed, we still have a nice result afterwards. Again, with the way that liposuction is done, whether it's done under IV sedation or general anesthesia, we are going to inject some fluid in order to more safely remove the fatty tissue and to constrict the blood vessels to help with post-operative swelling and bruising and also to decrease the amount of blood loss during the procedure itself. So essentially what we're doing is filling the areas with uh, what's called a tumescent solution that generally has um, epinephrine in it so that we get some constriction and oftentimes has either lidocaine or a longer acting anesthetic agent such as Marcaine for post-operative pain relief. Those are injected into the areas where we're going to do the liposuction before we start the liposuction procedure. And after allowing that to work for approximately five to 10 minutes, we will insert the cannula in order to remove the liposuction. Anytime we do surgery, there's the risk of bleeding, infection, and scarring. There is the risk of developing a blood or fluid collection underneath the skin after surgery called a hematoma or a seroma, although that is fairly uncommon. We don't use drainage tubes with this type of procedure. And again, the procedure itself is designed to remove the fatty tissue underneath the skin as evenly as possible, but we can have contour problems after surgery and we also can have skin excess. It is not designed to tighten the skin. Again, the surgery is gonna be done as an outpatient surgery. It is normal to expect there will be post-operative swelling and bruising after surgery. We do put you in a compression garment on any of the areas where we would do liposuction to help decrease the post-operative swelling and bruising. Those compression garments are to be worn upwards of six weeks after surgery. The majority of the swelling will be resolved after about six weeks from surgery, but it will take months before the final swelling resolves. I will notice most of it gone by about six weeks, but you as the patient will notice that over the next few months, upwards of six months to even a year, you will notice a swelling that resolves that you'll notice, but I don't, or nobody else will notice either. Again, the surgery is done as an outpatient other, either under IV sedation or general anesthesia. You will be in a compression garment. It is important that you uh, take it easy um, and avoid aerobic activity or gym activity for upwards of six weeks after surgery to help to decrease the post-operative bruising and swelling that you will expect. If you have any questions or concerns about anything that I've said today, please don't hesitate to ask.